Hey, what's up, everybody? We're bringing you live and right into the action here. We've got a Clout Chasers versus Dark Side Games matchup. Maxim Villeneuve taking on John T. And we're taking you right into the action already. It looks like we've got Max on Chain versus John on Bolt. And this is going to be one heck of a match. Thanks for tuning in with us last minute. Sorry, we weren't certain if this match was even going to happen. And we had to... Uh, do a little bit of communication, chat with some people, figure things out. But it, the match is happening, uh, as we can see here. It looks like Max is just taking a chance to kind of quickly do some sideboarding here quickly. He's shuffling up, and then I'm hoping we're going to get started here any moment. I've got Pat here again with me. How's it going, Pat? I am here. We are uh, we are thinking on our feet. Uh, we, we knew that this match might have uh, been able to take place um wasn't sure and then assembled very quickly and adam uh we have a potential request for another match i'm looking for uh i'm looking for a time right now i don't know if it's supposed to happen tonight or sometime in the near future but uh the clout chasers uh are requesting our services but getting into this match uh we do have chain versus bolton um this is uh this is this is definitely a different match than what we've seen before. I'm looking forward to it. Uh we see Bolton on Sabres, uh hinting at what uh what is gonna be uh happening on that side, and we see Maxim on chain. Uh, uh Maxim and Chain go together like uh toast and jam, bread and butter, or any number of Jackson five uh food uh compliments uh that you can think of here uh he goes he does very well with it uh and we see a shackle uh coming up turn one uh and just an arsenal pass from maxim uh onto the bolton player here yeah so bolton really Ma maxim getting his his setup turn that that chains really want to get to um to kind of start the game off but the Bolton now really getting the first opportunity to draw first blood and possibly set up uh or do something that can strip some cards out of Maxim's hand now with that being said I do find that Bolton's a fairly card hungry deck and this match uh on the first couple turns, it's going to be tough for the Bolton to really kind of push any any kind of scary damage as well. We see the Bolton coming in. He's playing a yellow take flight. So this is going to be three go again, charging with uh, a Valiant Thrust. So Bolton already down to two resources floating, only one card in hand left. Yeah, Bolton, uh, Bolton is definitely one of those, uh, you mentioned, you said card hungry. Uh, Bolton, I think more than most heroes are, is very dependent on a five card hand. Uh, you are looking to charge, uh, charge also known as putting a card, you know, putting a card into soul, uh, every turn early. Uh, there, there are a few ways to do that explosively. Unfortunately, um, once they get, uh, four to five cards into soul, they'll be looking to play defensively until they can find uh, multiple Lumina Ascensions uh, and to be able to play, uh, ideally play three of them in a single turn and have their own uh, combo uh, play here. Um, it is very dependent on finding the right cards and putting those cards into Soul so that he can, uh, he can give the swords a go again when it's time to pop off. Yeah. Apologize, we had a, a bit of a glitch there. Uh, we see the chain electing to take some damage there, and then... I may have been about 10 seconds slower, because I was looking at a, uh, just looking at a different feed here. Apologize. So we're back on Maxim's turn. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not sure what that face down card is supposed to be representing, but we've got uh, 
a ghostly visit coming in for six here uh, with the go again being given off of a chain activation. And then it might be an unintentionally flipped uh, non-attack that boosted the ghostly visit uh, to six. Let me hover over it here quickly. Oh, and because it's face down, I can't see what it is. Or I can't hover over and see what it is. Mm -hmm. There we go. It was a captain's yeah, call. It was a captain's that call. That explains Zero cost, it. Give it plus two. Shackle, give ghostly visit. Go again. Come in with the Rosetta. Uh, a nice early chain turn. Uh, there is a... The, so that that is a Tome of Findel being banished. Uh uh, there, that seems to be some recent chain uh, tech uh, that uh, uh, chain aficionados seem to be gravitating towards. Really? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't. I can't pretend to uh, to know. I mean, card draw is always good, right? There's a lot of there's a lot going on uh, in chain these days. Some you've seen a lot of snatch as well. Uh, I think I think the limited targets uh, for blood debt are driving a need for uh, increased card draw, which might seem kind of counterintuitive because of the the ability to soul shackle and banish so many cards. But in reality, chain is is very much dependent on uh, on the card hands and pitch stacking to really get by these days. You do not have your nine seeds of agony uh uh being uh being banished uh here anymore so there are some you know there are some chain builds that have as low as 17 legal uh blood debt targets total in your deck so you're really you're really shackling not not aggressively but strategically only when you need to and uh sometimes those banishes can be much more of a liability than uh than it used to be So to have support uh, in the form of uh, those tomes and snatches to generate old-fashioned card advantage through, you know, on hit and uh, and uh, <clears throat> in particular tome with uh, spell creepers as an instant, not losing, you know, not losing an action point. Um, those those are, are recent tricks uh, for chain to kind of maintain its its reign here as you know, pro I think a pretty pretty solid number four deck in the meta. Uh, right now yeah and chain it's interesting because chain certainly has done a good job of just staying on top and being relevant despite despite it getting meddled with a lot and, and taking some hard hits you know first losing seeds and then losing plunder run uh, those are all powerful chain weapons uh or chain tools sorry but we see here, uh, I apologize, we've been chatting through a couple turns. Uh, let's get you back into the action. We've had a uh, change just coming off a turn here. Uh, a, a pretty simple swarming gloom veil into Sol Rosetta. Uh, and now we're passing back into uh, John's turn now. Or John looks like just playing the defensive game right now, uh, blocking full out. We're passing right back into Max's turn again. Max on Soul Shackle 3, uh, hitting a belittle, a minimalism, and a red bounding demigon. So one for the blood debt right now. Uh, Max has a full five card hand plus his blood debt. Uh, and this is really where Max wants to be right now. Max is right in the driver's seat. Uh, however, yep. uh, as the OTK, or I, I imagine that is the, the plan here for John at this point, John's just looking to cycle through his deck until he finds the cards he needs for his combo. And John, like for 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 Max to be on Shackle Three already, John's still sitting at a healthy 36 health. So Max in the driver's seat, very much so, but John's still right where he wants to be right now. Yeah, it is. Bolton is uh, Bolton is an interesting hero because you still have so many different parts that have to come together uh, in order for the deck to perform optimally. Um, so it is uh, it is a bit concerning for the Bolton player to not be putting cards in soul because he really does need uh, a critical mass of charged cards in order to really effectively go off. 
Um, so to you still so you you have to play defensively, but you also have to you know you you have to balance that. So you're you're playing you're playing a tightrope game uh, this entire match until you get to your luminas. Yeah, yeah, and you you need to maintain that life total so that once you do hit your you, your combo pieces uh, in this case being mm -hmm. the luminas you have the life total you require to really absorb any hit you see no matter what uh so we see here shadow puppetry into that red bounding demigod uh mm -hmm. john opting to block with a soul shield here so that's an easy block for six um so no activation off the shadow puppetry the shadow puppetry being that if the bounding demigon would hit uh maxim would get the opportunity to look at the top card of his deck and mm -hmm. banish that card if he should so want to uh so then maxim following that up with the chain activation shackling to four into a rosetta thorn uh two arcane and two physical this threatening go again This time it does not look like he's got any ability to follow up on it, but it is the the ability of Chain to to shackle and attack with the Rosetta with Go Again uh, is one of its strongest features. Having that mid chain uh, mixed damage instead of, uh, for instance, Briar or Viscerai only basically doing it on the tail end uh, of something it adds a different a different wrinkle, wrinkle a different decision point as a as your opponent. Uh, it makes you have to think about what's what's coming ahead. Yeah, exactly. And it looks like following that, we're just going to pass to the end of... Or no, we're closing the combat chain to... Hmm, what are we doing here? Oh, I think he might have just been clearing things up and still needed to resolve the physical on the Rosetta. Yep, because we're then going into a swarming loom veil. He's got more cards. <laughs> I think TTS might have misled us a little bit to feel uh, to make it appear like that was the end of it. Uh, but uh, Maxim uh, still has two more cards in his hand. Yeah, sometimes it. Uh... Yeah, so it's a, TTS isn't a perfect uh, perfect beast here, but. Uh, now a a Rosetta into a swarming uh, definitely adds it just leaks more damage. Yes, it does. So we see here uh, John holding on to one card on his turn. Mm. He's just going to arsenal that card and pass back to Maxim. So now we got to wonder if maybe that was the first Lumina right there in in his arsenal. Uh, we see uh, four shackles on. Uh, Maxim's turn. He's got one hit. It's a blue invert existence. That brings up a good point. Uh, without the Snapdragons, uh, uh, the Bolton player using uh, Null Rune instead of Snapdragons uh, may hit towards a fatigue style strategy, which is why we're not seeing so much, uh, so many cards in <clears throat> in Soul here. Good looks, chat. That's uh, that's likely what's actually going to be happening here. Obviously, uh, looking at uh, uh, Chain's likelihood of fatigue is perhaps a little greater uh, than most other heroes because it's it's basically a self milling deck. It has a it has a finite uh, lifespan here. It is it it will uh, it will eventually, given given enough turns, banish uh, its entire library uh, without uh, without anything stopping it. And once that happens. Uh, chain is out of options yeah uh so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because yes you're right chain is very easy to fatigue um so i do ex i do expect a uh uh basically bolton bolton is uh likely just planning on blocking out as much as possible preserving enough cards to make sure that he's not uh He's not blocking out and losing as many cards as uh, Chain is uh, uh, through his soul shackles and and playing aggressively, um, but uh, that's that's the that's the race we're we're seeing here. Yeah. So here we see uh, Command and Conquer off of a Shadow Puppetry. Uh, so that would have been seven go again. 
which we saw full blocked, uh, followed up by uh, a chain activation, shackling to five into a Rosetta for two, two physical, two arcane. And John just thinking about his blocks here right now. Mousing over the, the Courage of Blade Hold, possibly thinking of throwing his Courage in front of this. And we're going to see a pitch for the Arcane. And yeah, he's going to throw Courage of Blade Hold in front of the Rosetta to prevent the physical. And definitely pitching away the Lumina probably tells you all you need to know about that uh, the defensive nature of the strategy here. Yeah. Just trying to set up for that should the second cycle of the deck even become a factor setting up so that he's got those luminas when he needs them uh, in the later game. But there also is the, the possibility that he's pitching that lumina because he's already got one in arsenal here. Uh, Max still being at 36, uh, it might be a little early to try uh, popping off as well. So sadly, possibly pitching away a lumina that he doesn't want to give up otherwise. Mm-hmm. So we're going into Shackle 5. And we see a yellow bounding Demigon, and that is it. And this is uh, this is kind of what I was talking about when uh, uh, about Chain's uh, limitations here. Uh, that is, on Shackle 5, uh, you have you have gained one card through the bounding demigod, which is it's not nothing. Um, but you did also lose four, you know, four effective cards. I believe I saw command and conquer, shadow puppetry, captain's call. Uh, those are all uh, obviously cards that could have could have been used and have no no use in the banner zone. Uh, so that it is one of the main reasons I re really credit. Uh, the chain players who are able to do this because I cannot wrap my head around here. And we have a soul reaping uh, play and banishing a ghostly visit to get there. Yeah, playing the alternate, paying the alternate cost and ga gaining a resource off of it. Uh, and we're going to see John just easily full blocking this out. Yep. We'll go again currently. I'm wondering if he's going to activate creepers here. And we're going to see a pitch. Oh, this does have go again because. Uh, oh, does it? John has card as in soul. Oh, well. One of the lesser known soul <laughs> reaping uh, conditions is if the opponent has a card in soul, the, the soul reaping games go again. All right. Thank you, Adam. How often does uh, does Chain find himself playing against another hero with a soul at this point? Uh, I mean, Prism. He's got to gotta love the Monarch-based matchups. Yes. Yes, he does. Yeah, so Soul Reaping, Go Again, uh, Rune Chant, a Nimbalism, sh uh, a Shackle Activation into a Ghostly Visit, still has... One resource floating likely coming in. Well, he can Bounding Demigon would go again after this. And then uh, Rosetta uh, to, to clean it up. And of course, this is this is what makes Chain super good. These, yes. These, uh, these long combat chains uh, really stretching your opponent out, forcing them to block, still leaking damage through, uh, you know, having having a damage ceiling uh, of upwards of, of 30 damage. Uh, is really what brings uh and that was actually it for for the turn interesting yeah and that was that was just to get caught up a uh, a ghostly visit for seven uh into a rosetta for two and two mm -hmm. and now we see the bolton turn and bolton is going to have a turn here uh we're going to see a bolt of courage and let me just find my mouse cursor here so i can and that'll be a blue bolt of courage. So this is coming in for one. And if it hits, draw not, a card. Not the most threatening thing in the world. I mean, you know, it is a, it isn't on. I don't believe uh, it was charged uh, either. So I, I don't think that this no. is coming in uh, 
four any significant on hits. No, and that's uh, Max. I'm very happy to take that. Uh, mm-hmm. And the Bolton player, was, that bolt of courage was from Arsenal, so that makes more sense. The Bolton player just looking to clear out their Arsenal to yeah. mm-hmm. uh, make some room for another card here, it looks like. Yeah, we're going to see John Arsenal and pass his turnover. So we're going back to the start of Maxim's turn here. Max at uh, six soul shackles. So this is really where we're starting to see the 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 chain player get to just the punishing. We have one, two, three. Has an unhallowed rights, a rift by two unhallowed rights, uh, and a rift bind. Yeah. Uh, shackles. So now he's got he's got four four card uh four attacks in uh in banish. Uh the the non uh the lack of of blood debt non attack actions is uh I, can be pretty obvious in in times like these. Uh he really needs to have those shadow puppetries, captain's calls uh etc in hand to really enable some of his turns here he really that single non-attack action that can start turning some of these guys on and i'll be on will do that pitching uh pitching pitching a captain's call going to seven seven soul shackles yeah Next attack has go again. It looks like he's going to start off with the um, red unhallowed rights. This is going to be seven with go again, placing the howl from beyond just played. Looks like. Yeah, there it, it goes have that to the option. bottom yep, of the deck. Yep. So seven go That's... again. Nothing to scoff at. No. And John looking to block for three here, it looks like. Or no, we're going to throw a sink below at this as well. So that's going to be a full block for seven, sinking a card to the bottom of the deck. And that's the beauty of cards like sink below in a deck like this, is they really help you cycle through the deck and filter through to find those combo pieces you're looking for. Uh, We see Maxim off the Unhallowed Rights is going to play a blue Mob Skies into a red Rift Bind. So this is going to be three, uh, four, five with go again. On hit, create a rune chant. Itching the art of war. Leads me to believe that that hand was pretty devoid of uh, of targets there, because I, I would imagine that if he had anything uh, worth banishing, he would have uh, started the started the turn. Uh, with that art of war, but not not worth it if you don't have the the shadow of Earth or, or, or you know any any number of the uh, blood debt based attacks to yeah. to effectively banish and really gain that value out of art of war. And it's a it's a shame art of war doesn't let you banish the non attack action, banish that hell from beyond. Uh, so here we see uh, John just passing the turn back to Max again. Uh, Max coming into Shackle 7, so banishing 7 cards off the uh, top of his deck. And he is already, I mean, we're getting we're getting close to the end game here. Uh, it is not uh, that that deck does not have a lot of cards left. <laughs> and it looks like Max just he briefly is... forgetting to draw up before he Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so but Shackle what, what 7. Makes, ooh, here we go. We see the Eclipse here. Interesting. Yep. And we got we have four Blood Deck cards in the Banish right now. It would take another, how many is it that have to be played? Six? I believe six before Eclipse can, can be played. So he needs to have two more somewhere. Six or more <laughs> cards with Blood Debt. So he needs to have two more in hand to pull this off this turn. Two, yes, two more in hand, yep. So 
So these are the turns where Chain really needs to get get down to thinking and figure out how to piece together these long combat chains and keep finding the go agains. And so he does have who? Here we go. That's one way. To starting get, off uh, with the Art of War. To get a blood deck card in there. We're going to see a red bounding yep. demigon get banished to draw two. It's five. Yeah, it draws two. And he did move that <clears throat> that howl, howl uh, from beyond. Uh, may become very relevant soon here uh, that uh, he he put back with the unhallowed rights. Uh, we also, I don't think we've seen uh, multiples of that coming in. He shackles. He's up to eight. Ghostly right. visit for uh, with go again. I believe the oh, this is five. Yep, five. So you get a plus one from our war. So John thinking about his blocks here. I gotta imagine that he he has a plan here for number six, um, in in trying to get Eclipse going here, because uh, otherwise his life total is high enough where he can take the blood debt, um, if he knew that he needed another turn to set up here, because it does look like John is on on a purely defensive. Uh, defensive posture here so i don't think he's gonna he, he he would not be threatening cards from hand so uh i believe maxim is is going to attempt an eclipse activation here uh, this turn god wouldn't that be fun to see an eclipse hard casted here on stream dare to dream adam why not us <laughs> why not now well, John's, uh, or not John, Max is at uh, one blood deck card currently played. Mm -hmm. Looks like John's going to block this for three. Looks like it, taking two down to 18 from 20. And then we've got Max, I'm carefully thinking about his next step here. A uh, a shadow verser would be great with a banishable card uh, from hand. And here we see a howl from beyond a, pitch yeah, to play a howl from, from beyond. Nice. So that puts Max at two blood deck cards played here. He can. He can do it. There are. There are six blood deck cards on the board. He's got two cards left in hand. He has not shackled. He pitches. He has already pitches shackled. And unhallowed. Oh, he did. He's shackled to. Yep. That's right. Now we see him tucking that same Hal from Beyond played to the bottom of his deck. So that puts all three Howls near the bottom of his deck. We're going to see this get blocked for six, taking one. And Max looking to pass to the end of his turn here, taking four blood or three blood debt. Alas, no Eclipse activation for us. This Not time. yet, at least. I believe he's got uh, those howl, howls from beyond. I believe are pretty pivotal to uh, to an end game sequence here for uh, for chain that does does include the uh, the eclipse being activated here. It is uh, uh, I think I think it's most easily uh, probably activated once uh, a couple more uh, invert existences. Uh, show up in in the banished zone. Uh, it creates a pretty easy way to get multiple blood deck cards played uh, when that happens. So here we're going to see uh, 
Was that an attack with a saber? That was an yeah. attack with a saber, uh, and Max just happy to absorb that. So coming into Shackle 8, uh, Max banishing 8 cards off the top of his deck. And Max's deck starting to look pretty thin here. Yeah, yeah you know, we've got is, 7 is cards way? left in deck okay. after this. Well, and here we go. Shadow, still shadow a... bounding, shadow. They're all attacks. The invert existence is the only uh, non-attack, and that's an instant. Uh, so he still needs. There's a there's a there's a pretty uh, pretty big game here that needs to be played. So here we're gonna and see a, a shadow of Urser get played uh, with a Riftbind banished. So this is gonna be two with go again. And I think John just took that. Oh, no, now taking that down to 14. There we go. And Max thinking about his next step here on this turn. I don't think any <clears throat> other than the shadow, uh, no, none of those attacks have go again inherently. No, so they do might... not. So we're going to see another shadow banishing a shadow. Oh, Interesting. Banishing a shadow. All right. All right. This is going to be another two with go again. So there is possibility that. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be real nice to see that that third shadow uh, get go again from a banish. That would make uh, make his life a lot easier here. He's still got a card in arsenal. He's still got two in hand. He hasn't pitched anything. So we see John opting to take this again. Down to 12. And there we're going to see... I was gonna say uh, at this point, I think he's just judging blocking efficiency, uh, two block versus or a blocking a three block versus a a, a two damage card uh, isn't gonna create the uh, the most beneficial scenario for him. Right. Optimal defensive play. And we do have a captain's call being played, uh, followed by a bounding demagon. A three blood debt. The eclipse count is on. And he'll be able to shackle and give a fourth a one go again. A spell creeper's activation here. Oh, there we go. We got a shadow puppetry. Shadow puppetry. And I think that'll get us our six, because let's see, the Shadow of Urser is one, two, three. He'll be able to give a fourth one go again here, and then off the chain activation, you'll be able to give a fifth one go again. And he creepers for an extra action point in here as well. He's got, he does, he's got two action points. This is exciting. <laughs> We're going to see Urser. Show me Urser. like both players are just making sure that they have a clear idea of what's happening. Yeah. If I had to guess, it uh, looks like they're talking about the creepers and the action points. So this is going to be five with go again. Mm -hmm. 
looking looks like math. Yep, five with go again. Bolton's at twelve. He does still have two block left on his armor. Not worried about uh, courage. Because as we said, he not wasn't really looking for it. So that uh that for all intents and purposes was just three block. Makes you wonder about the choice for uh, gallantry gold here, though. Uh, you know, if he was going purely defensive, uh, would he have gone? Uh, was bracers the right call to just add three more block? Uh, that's a good question. Because I think gallantry gold does itself play into the OTK plan as well, giving extra every extra swing or every swing an extra plus one. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if he read some signs in his early hands that made him think about transitioning, and he hedged with the, uh, with the null rune boots. We do have. We have got a three block taking two. Down to ten. And off of the Shadow Puppetry, we're hitting that first uh, Howl from Beyond again. Nice. Shackling. Does that put him up to... Th no, that keeps him at two action points. We're going to see a blue bounding Demigon for two with go again. Shifting the chain over. <laughs> Shifting that massive combat chain over. Chain problems. Where am I going to put the Urser? Am I going to put it here? No, you should put it over here. <laughs> Taken two. Down to one. Rosetta with an action point remaining. Had a moment of panic. It's like, no, not no Urser. One, two, three, four, five. So the Howl from Beyond will be the sixth one then. Or he doesn't have the resources for the Howl. No, he needs a woo. He can still he can he get can the Urser out here. Right? He can, can invert, he invert, he can rift bind, he can shadow averser. He's got options. He's got one action point, right? I, I yeah. think he needs to invert as an instant. I think well eclipse is an one, instant right? as well. But in order to attack with the Urser, he would have to use the Invert here, correct? Curious to see what Max is going to choose to do here. How, if he's actually going to get that, uh, trigger that eclipse and how he's going to make it happen. Oh, so we are going to oh, see yeah. the invert get played here. <coughs> uh, likely no, uh, not enough legal targets to effectively lose, uh, make him uh, take any arc. Yeah, we're going to see it two isn't, attack isn't, actions uh, get banished. But well, that is going to be six blood debt, and that's going to allow the Eclipse to get played. So we're going to see an Urser come out here. Nice. Followed by another attack for six. And this does have go again because he has cards and soul. So that's going to be 
The Shadow of Earths are following that up with another two. This is going to chip John down to four. Oof. So Earths are the Soul Reaper, uh, which I believe Eclipse is representing at the moment, uh, is an ally with six attack uh, and six life. Uh, once per turn attacks, uh, once once per turn action, zero attack. While Ursa is attacking a hero with one or more cards in their soul, the attack has go again. Yes, so and it is. It is. It is online. Now we're gonna see Max banish pretty much the rest of his deck. He's got three cards yeah, left. This, a, this is it. Blue bounding demigon, a red unhallowed rites, and a howl from beyond. That gives him two howl from beyonds. We're going to see him start off with uh, attacking with the Ursa. This is going to be six with go again. Yep, John's at four again. life here. That's going to take two cards out of his hand. So he does, he can shackle. Uh, but no, oh, and he's got a full grip. Uh, and sigil of Solace? Can anyone yeah, we're going to see a sigil get played here. It looks like a red sigil. So we're going to see... John, go up three, and then go down three, and stay effectively at four. So then we're going to see the Red Howl get played, uh, with the blue Minnowism being pitched, giving the next attack plus three. Or I should say the next attack action card plus three. We're going to see Chain get activated, giving the next go again. And that's going to be into a... Red on Hallowed Rights. This is going to be seven. Go again, and then we're going to see that howl go back to the bottom of the deck. And he has a deck again. And John's going to be. I think pretty That's well forced number. to throw his hand at this. This might be. This might be it. Seven. Depending on what else he's got. Yeah. No, oh, there's the Lumina. Oh, and we're going to see as an attack reaction, the Art of War get played, pumping this to eight, I believe. Yes. That's going to leave John at two. No cards left in hand. Well, you can really just, uh, you can Rosetta and end it. I think Max is going to have a little more fun than that. He's going to play the Howl from Beyond out next. Yeah, he's still got a card from hand. Yep. yep. And then we're going to see the Bounding and... Demi gone. And I believe this is <laughs> going to be five with Go again. Oh, and a Sigil. Oh. That leaves John at one with the Rosetta coming in to, I believe, finish the deal. Doing the math, looks like that is all she wrote. Players just going Make over it quickly. Sure. Yep. And it looks like it's we always see the fun it. part of TTS. You, you really, you know, it's silent there. We're not quite sure what's happening. The cards are fumbling around a little bit. Someone just needs to flip the table so we know. But he's putting them away. I think that is uh, that's a, a GG's in uh, a win for Maxim for the Clout Chasers with a a textbook uh, performance of Chain. That is that is you to play Chain into some sort of fatigue kind of a shell. That is yeah, you, you can't get cleaner than that. That is how it's done. Nope, oh, that was that was, Max that was great. He, putting uh, pitch on stacked. a clinic, <clears throat> absolutely. Uh, pitch stacked into an endgame state, uh, leading to an eclipse uh, activation. Got the eclipse activation, and that was really what sealed the sealed the the deal there. Bolton going trying to block out and uh, fatigue out chain, uh, and just overwhelming card advantage over time. Yep, exactly. And it is fun to to see these kind of matches. Uh, Chain ver Chain and Bolton are uh, are two heroes. Uh, Chain Chain's probably pretty clearly number four, but Bolton Sabers is is not something that people think about a lot. 
but it does seem to show up uh a, you know I, more often than i think people are giving it credit for uh it did it did have uh, appearances and calling in minneapolis uh it has shown up in greater numbers than i think people might realize uh in the last pro quest season uh, it does have some legs. Everfest did give give it some cards. It's still it's still I think pretty clearly like a tier two. But for people who aren't prepared for it, um, there there's a uh, especially if they uh, you know some some of them have that soul food tech where they just load up their uh, load up their hand into soul turn zero and all of a sudden they're you know they're they're on their turn you know turn four or five uh, for all intents and purposes. Uh, if that if all they wanted to do was get those uh, you know get those cards charged up and in soul and now you're just waiting for your luminous at that point uh, and it can it can go off and be lethal as early as like turn three or four yeah and exactly it, just, it surprises people it happens <laughs> and it's such a hard thing to block when it happens now this uh, a thing of note we did have uh for the clout chasers we did have frank hung taking on kenny thomas earlier today frank hung being able to take out the win there so i do believe that puts the clout chasers at two nothing up over uh dark side games for this series currently at this point i believe you are correct and i i think max thomas is playing for the clout chasers uh if not right now, yeah, they are they are playing right now. Tower number nine streaming uh, streaming that and uh, and Frank's game uh, earlier uh, this evening. Uh, that one I do recommend people go watch that. It was a nail biter of this uh, of Frank on Viscerai versus. Let me get his name here so I'm not messing up. Uh, Kenny Thomas from Dark Side on Prism in. Uh, barnstormer of a of a match uh a, a big comeback uh by frank uh to to win it uh but uh, i do recommend watching it if you're looking for some uh super exciting flesh and blood action after you've seen all the games that we have on the combat chain then go over to tower number nine and catch the highlights of the games that you you may have missed while giving us your time here uh, on our channel. <laughs> well, I think that's going to bring us to the end of this broadcast. Uh, thanks again for tuning in, everyone. Uh, and until next time, we're closing the combat chain. I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we'll I see you guys tomorrow. All right? Yeah, we have a couple. Uh, uh, we got a couple matches coming up. We'll we're back at it tomorrow. See you guys then. Take care. Peace out.